Hey guys, how's it going? Okay, today I'm going to show how I easily set up Spark inside of Jupyter Lab or Notebook. I'll show you the configurations within the Bash profile. So that way you're not trying to write Spark in the terminal like all the other intro videos have. Like you can actually do something in Spark in an actual environment that's like a legitimate IDE. So here's the initial pictures you can see that i say download spark i'm using 3.1.0 it's the newest major release and what i'm gonna do is i did 3.1.0 so i actually went to the spark website just type in like download spark into your browser and then this will be the first guy that pops up and then from there uh, you can do pre-built with apache hadoop even if you don't have it which i don't have um, i don't have any configuration installed on my laptop and I'll say download spark you actually click this link and then for whatever reason I don't know why it says we suggest following here so I think it sends you to the UC Berkeley um, website where you can actually download the entire file and then so then you'll click on this link and then you'll actually start seeing the download you know in like the the bottom left hand corner of whatever operating system you're in um, once that download, once that comes in, you'll get like a zip file and from there, so you can see from there that I actually download, I actually have the spark downloaded in my downloads folder now. So I'm on Mac, right? It'd just be in my finder. And then I just move it to my desktop so that I can actually see, um, where it's at. So like if I minimize this guy really fast, you can see that I have spark over here and the TGZ file. And then you can see that I've actually unpacked it right next to it. So let's bring that guy. So, and then what you're gonna end up doing is you're going to unpack it using tar, uh, XV, ZF, right? Just like all the nomenclature, go look it up if you feel like you care about what these parameters are. Unpack it on desktop, and then this is what it will actually give you the actual downloaded file. Okay, great. Now we're unpacked. Okay, now at this point you'll have Spark and if you typed PySpark into your terminal, you would actually get like a Spark session. But again, that's in your terminal. Who wants to write Spark in their terminal? Like nobody, right? So I'm gonna put it in Jupyter Lab. I'm gonna show you kind of a couple of the bash commands that help get you to there. So let me delete out of that. And so I wrote update, update bash profile settings. So notice that I have a couple of settings. So I said nano bash profile, use nano or vim or whatever you want just to like get into it itself and actually update your variables. So let me open another window just so you can go along with what I'm doing. And I do nano dot bash profile. And you can see that I have all these guys in my bash profile. So I'm exporting the spark home, which again is my um, most recent, um, it's my desktop, it's on my desktop. And then I just append it to my path. And then these three guys are the keys to opening it within Jupyter Lab itself or Jupyter Notebook. So I have these exports, PySpark shell, and then notice that I have the word Jupyter right here uh, in the PySpark driver. And then I have lab in parentheses in this export. So if you wanna change lab, you can come down here. If you only want this in Jupyter Notebook, which I just straight up like Jupyter Lab better now. I think it's a way full, way better idea, especially as Python 3.8. You could just write notebook right here and then save. So instead, again, I'm just gonna write lab because I want it in Jupyter Lab when I open it up and then save it, control X, right? And then Y for yes. And so then you need to source it, dot bash profile. And I blew it, sources it. Okay, great. Now, what does that mean? Now, the cool part is, and again, I have all of these directions back here in my notebook, and this is beyond my GitHub. It's Kevin Keurig slash um, Spark. There you go. Go to Kevin Keurig slash Spark, and you can see the demo IPI and V that I'm working in this whole time. From there, I can actually initialize the Spark context, and it's naturally pre built in. So, if I want to open a session, right? Like let's say I'm in my workspace or whatever. Let me go, let me clear this out and go home. So rather than typing like Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook, like I traditionally would, since I've initiated those bash profile commands, I can now do 
So now that I'm here, if I actually type PySpark into the terminal, it will automatically populate a Jupyter Lab session with Spark pre-configured. So if I type PySpark, give it a second, it's going to open just like a traditional Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab environment would. And here I go, I got Jupyter Lab and boom, it pops right up. That's nice. Now, how do I actually tell? The SC variable is automatically populated because it stands for Spark Context. So if I run this cell, I should automatically get a Spark Context right here and I could open up the UI. Obviously, like I'm not doing anything within Spark at this point, but it's pre-built, it's great. So now I actually have like the PySpark built-ins just like I would in the terminal. So like if I run this for like RDD functionality or the uh, the data frame API, these packages are pre-built into this Jupyter lab session. So that's the intro on how to get it set up. I hope it was helpful in the next video. I will show you some of the basic functionality that I'm working on. Great. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.